uh, bring this very critical message to the world that we're now not in a climate change situation or a climate crisis or anything like that. This is a climate emergency and, and we've got to act now. Now, when I was reading through this whole thing, I saw that in chapter two, there is a map of the world um, you know, that you share. And specifically from 10,000 years ago, I'm just pull it up on the screen here for our viewers. Um, you speak about the fertile crescent and and you talk about how that has desertified and um and that we've done it you know brought upon ourselves with bad agricultural practices now share with our viewers a little bit around what is the fertile crescent and how is it related to um you know the crises that we're facing at this point well uh the fertile crescent you can see on that map the green area um and it, it's an area in which many factors have combined to 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 stress it, and and now they're they're fighting uh, desertification there. But if you look around the Fertile Crescent, you see desert everywhere, and um, the Sahara um, uh, is an area that was forested ten thousand years ago. Now. Think about that. We know that it was forested for millions and millions, tens of millions of years. And, and yet, in the last 10,000 years, the Sahara became a desert. Now, just objectively, when you just think about those numbers and you know nothing else, what are the chances that that had nothing to do with human beings? Tens of millions of years, it was a forest. And in the last 10,000 years, it became a desert. Um, what did human beings invent 10,000 years ago? Agriculture. What did they begin to do 10,000 years ago? Uh, animal husbandry. Yeah. Um, and so the, the Sahara, there may have been many factors in its creation. I know that climatologists point to something called a wobble in the Earth's axis, and that's over my head, frankly, Nibby. Um, so I'll, I'll concede that there could be multiple factors. But I'm certain that chopping down trees and grazing goats and sheep were factors. Um, and what you find today in these deserts is that the people who managed to survive the harsh conditions of the desert and live in the Sahara and live in the Thar Desert in northern India, what is their number one occupation? And the answer is animal husbandry. They go around the desert with their camels and their goats and their sheep. And so they are continuing a tradition that has lasted thousands of years and that is responsible for the environment they've inherited. And so we need to stop this or else we'll soon be talking about the Amazonian desert and the California desert. And so, you know, why is the Amazon being chopped down now in the greatest crime on earth? And it's being chopped down now for hamburger. Nothing could be more foolish and more self-destructive. You know, it's just crazy to destroy a precious rainforest for hamburger. There are no forests on earth that have been destroyed for broccoli or zucchini. Or, or apples or pears. So we, you know, we need to stop destroying forests in order to eat animals. Yeah, Gwen, thank you so much for connecting those dots. You know, a lot of people do not necessarily understand that animal, uh, you know, agriculture, us, you know, as human beings, our species moving from, um, you know, nomadism to pastoralism and then settled agriculture ended up, you know, creating uh, what I think researchers at the University of Durham actually uh, counted and they created these periods of epidemiological transitions. And, and they say that the first period of human-induced epidemiological transition that happened on the planet was, uh, you know, 10,000 years ago when we actually became uh, pastoralists and, and started uh, performing agriculture, both animal and monocropping and then so on. We started manipulating nature for our own selfish ends. And it continues. Now, in your book, you also talk about um, pasture maintenance fires. And yeah. I'm just going to pull that up 
as well. Wow. This is um, a NASA image uh, that you've shared. And boy, you know, you've seen all of those those fires and, and frankly, very scary. But um, tell us, like educate us. It, yes, um, these pasture maintenance fires, this is a NASA satellite image of pasture maintenance fires just in one on one day. Uh, I think it was one day about 10 or 15 years ago. So they're set all around the world on grazing land. And uh, the, the, the basic uh, maintenance that ranchers use is that they let their cows graze the land and anything that the cows don't eat, you know, any bushes and shrubs that start growing, they burn them. And uh, this has been going on for thousands of years, and I would argue was probably one of the sources of the deserts we see in the Middle East. Um, and um, again, nobody measures how much carbon goes into the atmosphere with pasture maintenance fires. When I told you that Silas Rao estimated 87% of, at least 87% of greenhouse gases from animal agriculture, even Silas couldn't factor in pasture maintenance fires because nobody measures this. Nobody knows how much carbon goes into the atmosphere from these fires. Um, so that's another reason why the numbers could be strikingly higher than 87 percent. Um, and so um, these fires are not are, are considered by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, they are considered quote, part of the natural carbon cycle. Now, who made this part of the natural carbon cycle? This is something people are doing. Mm. Uh, just like it's not part of the natural carbon cycle when a billion plus cows are, are belching methane and are exhaling carbon dioxide. That's too many cows. And we have too many pigs and, and too many sheep and so forth. So, you know, it's not... Yes, there's a natural carbon cycle when you have animals breathing and you have trees engaging in photosynthesis. But when you chop down three trillion trees, as humans have, there used to be six trillion trees, now they're three trillion. And you increase the population of ruminants, then there's no natural carbon cycle anymore. There's a, a skewed carbon cycle. And right. the pasture maintenance fires are another part of the skewing of any natural carbon cycle. Yeah. So those maintenance fires, if you notice that the, a lot of that red is near the deserts. Mm -hmm. And so these are causes of deserts. And we have to stop this. And so... Um, you know, again, if we restore the grazing land to, we rewild the grazing land, we stop these fires, we're going to, we're going to stop all that carbon that goes into the atmosphere from the fires. We're going to help the soil and the soil retains twice as much carbon as the vegetation above it. And we, we can save the earth, but we have to stop animal agriculture.